How's it going, people? Well, I should be sleeping, but it's just too damn hot and muggy up here on Mount Hope. I gotta get up in the morning and uh, check out a new house. I'm still house hunting, so I figured I'd get a little single malt uh, sleep aid. I <laughs> uh, wonder what else could help me sleep. Let's see. Oh, I know. I'll read another section from the DNC. That'll put anyone to sleep. Uh, Mark Twain says, it's chloroform in print. Nailed it. <laughs> Although it is occasionally hilarious. Let's see. Um, maybe, maybe we'll hit a funny passage. All right. Um, section 110. Let's read the masthead first. Oh, mm. visions manifested in Joseph Smith, the prophet, and Oliver Cowdery. They had one together, huh? Um, then they should both be prophets. Um, in the temple at Kirtland, Ohio, April 3rd, 1836. All right. Um, the occasion was that of a Sabbath day meeting. The prophet prefaces his record of the manifestations with these words. In the afternoon, I assisted the other presidents in distributing the Lord's Supper to the church, receiving it from the, uh, from the twelve whose privilege it was to officiate at the sacred desk this day. After having performed this service to my brethren, I retired to the pulpit, the veils being dropped and bowed myself with Oliver Cowdery, in solemn and silent prayer. After rising from prayer, the following vision was open to both of us. Personal manifestations of the Lord Jesus Christ. His acceptance of the temple, visitation by Moses, and his commitment of the keys of the gathering, visitations of Elias, and his uh, confirmment of authority, uh, visitation by Elijah in direct fulfillment of Malachi's prediction. Whoa. I thought Elijah and Elias are the same guy, it was just a different translation, you know, from New Testament to Old, but, you know, I could be wrong, I don't know. Let's get ready for this. Another, I have another shot. <sighs> oh. One, the veil was taken from our minds and the eyes of our understanding were opened. Two, we saw the Lord standing upon the breastwork of the pulpit before us, and under his feet was a paved work of pure gold in color like amber. Gold, the color of amber. Why not just say gold, the color of gold? Well, you know, the streets are paved with gold in heaven. Amber colored gold. <laughs> oh, come on. Pages are sticking together. It's hot. It's sticky tonight. Three. His eyes were as a flame of fire. A flame of fire. The hair of his head was white like pure snow. Probably because he's been washing it in his own blood. 
um, his continent shone above the brightness of the sun, and his um, voice was the sound of the rushing of great waters, even the voice of Jehovah saying, hang on, I need to brace myself for this. Behold, uh, wait, uh, no, four, saying, I am the first and the last, jumped ahead there, sorry, uh, I am he who liveth, and I am he who was slain. I am your advocate with the Father, five. Behold, your sins are forgiven you. You are clean before me. Therefore, lift up your heads and rejoice. Six, let the hearts of your brethren rejoice, and let the hearts of all my people rejoice, who have, with their might, built this house to my name. 7. For behold, I have accepted this house, and my name shall be here. In Kirtland, Ohio. Right? Uh, and I will manifest myself to my people in mercy in this house. 8. Yea, I will appear unto my servants and speak unto them with mine own voice. So he won't be using someone else's voice. If my people will keep my commandments and do not pollute this holy house. So it's conditional again. His unconditional love is always conditional. Nine. Yea, the hearts of thousands and tens of thousands shall greatly rejoice in consequence of the blessings which shall be poured out and the endowment with which my servants have been endowed in this house. 10. And the, f and the fame of this house shall spread to foreign lands. And this is the beginning of the blessing which shall be poured out upon the heads of my people, even so, amen. Wow, sounds important. Uh, 11. And... This vision closed, wait, after this vision closed, after this vision closed, the heavens were again opened unto us, and Moses appeared before us, and committed unto us the keys of the gathering of Israel from the four parts of the earth, and the leading of the ten tribes from the land of the north. Twelve. After this, Elias appeared and committed the dispensation of the gospel of Abraham, saying that in us and our seed all generations after this, after us, shall be blessed. All of them. Thirteen. After this vision was after this vision had closed, another great and glorious vision burst upon us. For Elijah, the prophet, who was taken to heaven without tasting death in a flaming chariot drawn by flaming horses. Uh, hey, you know, Muhammad uh, was on, flew to Jerusalem on a Pegasus, so anything's possible. Or not. Um stood before us and said, 14, Behold, the time has fully come which was spoken of by the mouth of Malachi, who came later, uh, should be sent, uh, wait, Malachi, testifying that Elijah should be sent before the great and dreadful day of the Lord, uh, of the Lord come. So, 
the Lord showed up, but Elijah came later, even though he's supposed to come before. Okay. 15. To turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the children to the fathers, lest the whole earth be smitten with a curse. 16. Therefore, the keys of this dispensation are committed unto your hands, and by this ye may know that the great and dreadful day of the Lord is near. Coming up in, what, 1836, sometime after that. Even at the doors, uh, and that's the end of section 110, I kind of flubbed it, but good enough. Good enough for this. Anyhow, it's been a while. Uh, I can see why I've taken so long. I'll get to that book, I promise. I'm going to keep doing it here and there. Anyway, I'm going to check out a house tomorrow morning at 10. Try to get some sleep, even though I, it's just... I'm swimming in my own juices. It's still so muggy and uncomfortable. Oh, well. Like I said, up here, the only air conditioning is an open window, so doing the best I can. Stay tuned. I'll let you know if I buy this house or if I'm still looking. Peace the fuck out. Have a wonderful whatever the fuck it is you're having. And I hope you learned something and you'll let me know what it was.